G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday evening here in Australia and we have had a bounce. And look, it's, it's a pretty good bounce as well. But all I'm going to say is don't jump to conclusions just yet and think that's it, the bottom's in. Look, look it could be. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying let's proceed with a little bit of caution here. I mean, when I say proceed with caution, again, I'm just buying the dip. I'm all good. It doesn't really matter what happens to the price at the moment. If it continues to go down from here, I continue to buy because I believe it's going up in sort of the more, you know, midterm. And again, even in the really long term, I think it's definitely going up from here. But in the short term, we could still face some more pain. It's definitely a possibility. This could be just a simple bounce and that it. So a bit of a dead cat bounce is what they would call it. But we'll get into that and have a look. All right, let's have a look at the market cap. It was a pretty good, you know, comeback again, 8%. That is up over $2 trillion. And look, that 100-day moving average seemed to be really good support for Bitcoin. So that's great. But it's one green candle. We just need to wait and see if that is, you know, the start of more green candles. Or again, it's just a little bit of a blip before we see some more downside. So let's have a look. BTC dominance, 48. So it's dropped again. Ethereum dominance is rising. So that's good. And gas prices are still super cheap. So that's really, really good as well. Now we can see there's some green here. So it's looking pretty good. But I mean, look, over the seven days, it's still pretty bearish for a lot of things. So let's have a look. In the last 24 hours... We can see, you know, there's plenty of things that have done well, but has anything really pumped? Has anything done really well? All right, absolutely. Polygon, we're going to talk about that very shortly. Slash Matic, doing amazing. Arweave, doing well. Amp, Uma, Ravencoin, I mean, where'd that come from? PancakeSwap, Aave, Theta Network, Harmony, Horizon, Reserve Token. I mean, look, we can keep going down. There's just tons of coins here that are doing well. The graph, I mean, the, a great bounce. I was, you know, looking at buying some, thinking, oh, I wonder how much lower it'd go. And look, you know, again, it still could go lower, but either way, I'm still buying it anyway. But 15%, and again, for me, if it's more than 15% in 24 hours, it's a pretty good gain. And there is tons of coins there. Don't get me wrong, you know, 14%, 10%, 9%, even 5% gains. It's still a gain. We'll take it every day. But this is crypto. We're really looking for you know, those kind of more explosive gains. So we have had a number in there. Really, really good. Plenty of you know double-digit gains, which is really, really good. And that shows why we had that 8.1% uh, gain. But again, let, we'll get to the charts. Buyer beware. You know, it may not be the end of it. What hasn't done well, though? Is there anything that hasn't done really well? Nope. There's hardly anything that hasn't done well. Dogecoin continues to go down, but look, at least it's not dropping anymore. It might be close to the bottom. So if you really like Dogecoin and think there's going to be more pumps in it, could be a good buying price. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I may. You know, I'll have to make those decisions, but it'll be to flip it. It won't be to hold it. I just, I, I don't hear enough about Dogecoin doing anything new for me to want to jump into it and kind of really hold it long term but that's that's just me you know you may know more than me and you know congratulations to you if you got into dogecoin like i did it well under a cent and you're still holding because you are doing extremely well all right but look you know three percent uh loss you know four percent loss two percent loss and then we're really down to you know kind of the uh stable coins you know with their very small losses so hardly any losses whatsoever and lots of really, really good gains. And so that's great. That is fantastic. We all like that. Now we have a look at the charts and we sort of have, you know, then we can have a look and decide exactly where we're at. So first of all, let's go to Bitcoin. And here we are. We can see, I mean, that was, that was a pretty good sell-off. And, you know, again, pretty much almost perfectly off that 100-day moving average. Uh, it's bounced and we had a really good rise there. But that's all it is. This could be this before it again rolls over. Could be this before it again rolls over. So we just don't know where we are yet. This is a good gain, but really, you know, we have to get back to that kind of, you know, 50, you know, four ish, 58 ish thousand dollar range before I would say, yep, this is kind of the end of it. And we'd have to be done over a few days. If we just kind of rock it back up to, you know, 60,000, 58,000, I would still be worried that then we're going to roll over and continue to go lower again. Now, look, I don't have a crystal ball. It's not financial advice. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. 
It's just me being me. Really, that's the easiest way to say. I am always a little bit too pessimistic. I told about told you about that the other day, and not bullish enough on things as well. But other times, I'm exactly right. You know, it, it, it's it's a flip of the coin. No one truly knows exactly what's going to happen. But for me, I'm looking at this going, awesome, great gain. Again, something similar to this, although there was more. But look, this could roll over. There was not that much volume down here. I mean, that volume's less than this volume over here where it rolled over after it. And certainly less uh, than this volume here, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, again, don't rush out thinking, this is it, you know, guaranteed we're going to the top now. We could roll over. It's definitely a possibility. But really, again, this is where I think the best buying opportunity will come. And look, it almost wicked down to it kind of perfectly. You know, that kind of 46-ish thousand dollar range. If Bitcoin gets down into there, I think, you know, it's a pretty good buy. It could still be a good buy now. And, you know, again, long term, I think it's a good buy right now. Just in the short term, maybe not. But again, time will tell. And again, we've still got that 200-day moving average uh, that we haven't touched for quite a long time and look maybe and hopefully we kind of don't in all fairness but the 100 day moving average pretty much acted perfectly so maybe that was the key support level and you know it's roughly that kind of 47,000 ish dollar range where we've got a bit of support but again let's move on hopefully bitcoin well bitcoin does lead the way if bitcoin just ranges sideways altcoins are going to go spastic if bitcoin gets on a move it's going to drag everything up with it but it's going to outpace generally everything when bitcoin just dumps and dumps and dumps all the altcoins are generally going to start to dump as well and they dump twice as hard that's the way it is bitcoin is pretty much the most stable cryptocurrency out there and it's anything but stable it's still got heaps of volatility you know outside of the uh, stable coins that's what you need to remember so looking promising but let's just you know reserve our judgment for, for now anyway now here's this story we're talking about matic so polygon matic jumps ahead as the race for layer 2 adoption picks up increasing volume and tvl on quick swap along with steady growth in the number of projects joining polygon have analysts suggesting that matic price is undervalued and it's done pretty well. I'll tell you that before we uh, get to the charts. I mean, well, we already looked at it. It's done really well over the last sort of 24 hours or so. And it's still maybe undervalued. I, I think it is, again, but that's my personal opinion. It's not financial advice. Recently, Layer 1 solutions like Solana, we've got a Solana story coming up, and Cosmos have grown in prominence thanks to each network's faster transaction times and lower fees when compared to the Ethereum network. An even greater focus has fallen on Layer 2 solutions that can help Ethereum keep up with competition as it continues its process of switching to proof of stake. One project that has seen a steady rise in user activity and transactions over the past two months is Polygon. I think yeah, there's massive upside for Polygon. It's a great project, but it's still, you know, like most crypto projects, it's a promise. You're buying into a promise at the moment. It hasn't fully lived up to all the hype just yet. It's doing well and there's lots of partnerships and all that, but it hasn't completely, you know, it's not a finished product. And, you know, I guess technically these kind of things should never be a complete finished product. They should always be looking to upgrade and all the rest of it. But it is, it's not a finished product yet. So that's what we need to remember about these things. It all sounds good and sounds great at the moment. But we need, you know, to see that kind of, you know, as close to the final product as we can to really know whether this thing's going to succeed or not. And it's just not about how good it is. It's got to do with marketing and all sorts of things. You can have the greatest project in the world, the greatest thing, whatever it is. If it's not marketed right, people will never know about it and they'll never use it. And so it just won't do well. So there's more to it than just simply being a good project. Now, down here, we see data from Cointelegraph. Uh, markets and trading view shows that since hitting a low of 26 cents uh, as the market sort of sold off in the 18th so that's about a week ago matic has climbed 50 percent to 39 cents as adoption of the expanding l2 platform begins to ramp up now i was talking about matic a while ago saying that it had really you know it was kind of just trading sideways against bitcoin and i thought it was going to break out now does anyone remember these charts i said it's like steps it just follows along sideways for a while and again i said it around about sort of back here you know i was saying look this is really just traveling sideways i get the feeling like it's going to break out 
and boom, there we go. It had a fake out, so it got everyone excited on the 16th and then fell off down here to the 20th of April. And now look at it, boom, making its next move up. So for anyone who got onto that Matic, congratulations, well done. I didn't, unfortunately. I bought some, well, I wasn't buying too much at all. I've been uh, paying some other bills. I did buy uh, a little bit of stuff, uh, but it wasn't Matic, unfortunately. I bought some other stuff and, yeah kicking myself now that I kind of didn't follow my own advice but you only have so much money uh, to put into certain things and I wanted to build my port uh, build my position in some other things that I had smaller uh, positions in so again Matic doing extremely well now we go across to here we spoke about Solana before so Solana sets new all-time high while the rest of the market stagnates so one top coin is performing particularly well in spite of the latest crypto slump, Solana. The coin, the 13th largest by market cap, is up 14% in the last 24 hours and 55% in the last week. So we go back over here, we'll refresh this, and we'll go down and have a look at Solana. It has been doing well. Now, where is it? 13, 14 now. Look at that, 47%. In the last seven days nearly 14 percent in the last 24 hours and a little bit of a sell-off now look it could be the part of a, a bit bigger correction considering it did so well in seven days or it could just be a blip because it's in the hourly and this continues to go up who knows but again we go down to where was matic there yeah, polygon i mean look at that 39.2 percent over the last seven days and 41 percent in the last 24 hours and 5.1 percent in the last hour it's still going now what I would say is don't FOMO in too much to Polygon. Look, it could continue to rocket up and go much higher, but it's probably more likely that it's gonna have a bit of a pullback sometime soon, considering it's just got green candles across the board. So really you need it to be back in, you know, here about seven days ago, or even more so, I guess in the last 24 hours. Uh, and then, you know, you just ride that and kind of hold those gains. If you jump in now, you might find yourself, you know, in the red, at least, again, in the short term. All right. Eminem, he's the man. So he's getting into NFTs, and he's going to have three types of NFTs. So, I mean, the NFT space, it just grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, I'm very dubious about some of the NFTs. I like Eminem, and so, again, it's still kind of similar. I think, you know, it's more just if you're a big Eminem fan, you know, go for gold, you know what I mean, if you want to get into them. But just don't automatically think because it's an NFT and because it's an uh, m and it's going to go to the moon. Uh, there's no guarantees in that. But there is some good news. So let's go down and we'll have a bit of a read. So there's going to be three types of NST, NFTs up for sale. Each of them are high quality animations with an original beat produced by m and himself. So this is good and that gives it some value right there. Now there are 50 editions each of the first two NFTs, which are titled uh, which are titled as Tools of the Trade, and still uh, DGAF. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I'm probably a little bit too old, but DGAF. Yeah, not sure. Now this is the kicker though. They are going to cost five thousand dollars, so they're not cheap. But considering there's only 50 of them, and they are going to have a beat produced by Eminem. Look, there could be some really good upside to those. Now, again, that is not financial advice, and I am not telling you to rush out and buy them. I love Eminem. I'm a huge fan. Listen to his music, you know, since the beginning. I don't think I'm spending $5,000 on an NFT, in all fairness. I don't know if I'd spend $5,000 on any kind of NFT ever. It just seems a little bit much for me. But that's me, and I've missed out on, you know, so many crazy NFT gains. So, again, don't take... You know, anything I say is like financial advice or like I'm the be all, you know, the oracle and I know everything because I absolutely don't. I don't understand NFTs, you know, well enough in the actual art side of it. I understand what an NFT is and how they work. I just, yeah, knowing my luck, I'd go and put $5,000 into something that would turn into $2 later. So they're just not for me, but hey, this could be a great buy and it might not be a great buy. But if, if you're a fan and you're happy to spend 5000 then it doesn't really matter. You're a fan and it's, you know, again, sentimental kind of value and all the rest of it. So go for gold. But down here, so the third, and it's called Stan's Revenge, is an addition of one and will sell to the highest bidder. This, I think, definitely could hold some really, really good value because it's only going to be one. He's not going to make any more. 
So it'll be very, very interesting to see what the price might be for that. All right, last but not least. So fund manager Bill Miller says Bitcoin is not a bubble. Bitcoin is entering the mainstream as demand grows faster than supply. Now, I can't be 100% sure, but I think he said some things that weren't too positive about Bitcoin once upon a time as well. So we need to remember that maybe he's saying this because he's got himself a good bag of it and now he's ready to pump the hell out of it and have, have, have everyone pump his bags. Again, don't quote me on that. I haven't had a whole lot of time to go and research things tonight, so I haven't looked into that, but I just get the feeling he has said some things that weren't particularly nice about Bitcoin once upon a time. If I'm wrong... Let me know in the comments down below. Please try not to hammer me and you know give it to me. Just let me know I was wrong. So Bill Miller, the founder and chief investment officer of Miller Value Partners, does not think Bitcoin is a bubble. And I don't think it's a bubble either. It's playing out a cycle which it just repeats itself. It's going to have a peak and it's going to have a trough. That's just the way it goes. We're already seeing that now. But yeah, I don't think it's a bubble. Bubbles are something that pop and never really come back again. Now we go down here, and this is what he had to say. Supply is growing 2% a year. So there's 2% of you know more Bitcoin being made every year, and that's getting less as well. And demand is growing faster. That's all you really need to know, and that means it's going higher. I don't think this is a bubble at all in Bitcoin. I think this is now the beginning of a mainstreaming of it. 100% agree, Mr. Miller. I don't know if I could have said it better. It's not a bubble. Will it have a peak? Absolutely. Will it then have a retrace? Absolutely. Will it be, you know, like it's been previously, where, you know, it'll have this real big blow off top and then retrace 70, 80%? I don't know. I don't know. It could. I don't think it will. I think the high will be high, but let's say it gets to 300,000. I think you'll be hard up to buy Bitcoin under a hundred thousand if it makes it to three hundred thousand again not financial advice you know no guarantees in life but really if bitcoin makes it to 300 or more i will be selling everything i have to buy bitcoin if i ever see it back down around fifty thousand dollars there's nothing i won't do to get onto bitcoin at fifty thousand and look could it go lower to thirty thousand twenty thousand Absolutely, because I don't know what the exact top is and I don't know what the exact bottom is and I don't need to. I've just got to be thereabouts and I'm going to make great gains. And I've been in Bitcoin for you know long enough to know that if you generally just hold long enough, you'll be in profit eventually and you'll be well in profit. Now, will that last forever? Who knows? I couldn't tell you. I'm not a fortune teller. All right, that's it for me. So a bit of a quick one. I did have work today and I've got work tomorrow. Uh, one day I'd love to have this as my full-time job. I'm just not quite there yet, but you know, fingers crossed and I can keep dreaming. <laughs> but if you can do me a favor, please, at the very least, just go down and hit that like button for me and comment down below uh, anything you like. If there's something I can do better, something you'd like me to report on, whatever, it just helps with the algorithm. I'd really like more people to get onto my videos. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment, at least in the short term. We'll wait and see how that plays out. And I'll see you next time.